Hey folks, it's Pat here. i got a chapter 10 question uh, that I want to cover today, and that's this guy, hypothesis test for the population mean t-test. All right. Um, so this is the next uh, hypothesis test you're going to do after the z-test. If you haven't seen the video that I did on the z-test, go back and do that one. Uh, look at that one real quick um, before you tackle this one, just because I go on that one in a little bit more detail. All right. But we're going to rock these out real quick. T-test is exactly the same as the z-test, except for one 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 difference, we're going to use the t-statistic t rather than the z-stat uh, because we don't know what the population standard deviation is, okay? So if we do know the population standard deviation, of course, we can use the z-test. But here, and the way that you pick these out is, well, when you're doing pi progress, you just look at the top and says t-test. <laughs> but um, if you're in the quiz, it won't give you the population standard deviation, but it'll stay specifically what the sample standard deviation is. Okay, so same drill as before. We're going to build our hypotheses, pick the test statistic, calculate it. And then uh, this one wants us to do crit value method. So you'll either do the crit value method or the p-value method to actually make a conclusion here. Okay, so here we go. Let's start with uh, picking out our alternate hypothesis. That's our claim. It seems these days that college graduates who are employed for full-time work more than 40 hours a week. Data available, blah, blah, blah. Survey was recently sent out a group of adults. So... 19 respondents, the mean number of hours worked, 19 respondents, 45 hours, the standard deviation of 10. Assume the population hours worked by college graduates full-time is normally distributed with a mean of zero. Can we conclude that college graduates actually work more than 40 hours a week? And so that's our claim. We're saying that it's now more than uh, 40 hours a week, whereas before it is 40 hours or less. Okay. So... T stat on this one, the first thing it's going to ask us for is degrees of freedom in here. And so degrees of freedom is always just the number of, of folks in your sample. So in this case, 19 minus 1. Okay. And of course, uh, that's important for calculating other things, but um, you already knew that. All right. So value the test statistic on this one. So we can calculate that using the Alex calculator real fast here using this formula. Okay. T is exactly like the Z formula with one little change, all right? So T equals X bar, which is our sample mean minus our population mean, all over sample standard deviation. So this is S, sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of our sample size, so N, okay? And so that one, to calculate it, it's pretty straightforward. We just take our sample mean, 45, minus our population mean, which in this case is 40, which gives us five, divide that by um, our sample standard deviation, which was 10, 10 hours, and divide that again by the square root of our sample size, which is 19. And note, this is sample size, not degrees of freedom. Okay, so 2.1, um, 2.179, okay, is our test statistic. And so for to find our crit value, all right, we're going to do the t-table lookup, which is using this guy right here, okay, and our level of significance, so which is .05, all right, so t, um, we're looking for everything greater than this, so t.05 with degrees of freedom being 19 minus 1, 18, there's our t-value right there. So 1.734, okay, so this guy is, oh, did I not calculate that to three decimal places? Maybe it's still in the calculator. Let's see. Yep. <laughs> 1.79. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. So there was a little hack I just showed you. But anyway, so since this crit value is less than this um, um, test statistic, so remember with normal distribution, set our mean to zero. So our T stat, our critical value here is 1.734 or I mean our critical value is 1.734, but our T stat is out here, it's 2.179. So this guy is greater than our critical value, so yes, we can actually say that these are fundamentally different. Okay, so that's how you do a t-test here in Alex using the calculator, or you can jump over to the module three folder and pull up that handy dandy hypothesis testing website, um, MathCracker, and you wanna make sure you're on this test here, t-test for one population mean. Again, ignore the pop-ups, all right? Punch all the stuff in there, all right? So whatever it asks for. Um, just remember, with this guy, you're gonna write your hypothesis test just as a sign, and then it's gonna ask you what our hypothesized mean is, all right? And so whenever you're on this here, 
This right here is going to be your hypothesized mean, which we pulled out from here, okay? But you're actually going to punch that into the site, put all that stuff in here, and it gives you all the information that we just calculated. So let's just double-check your answers while we're at it. So here's our test statistic, 2.179. Going back here, yep, 2.179. And our crit value, all right, so which is um, negative 1.734, positive 1.734, hmm. I put these in backwards I might have put these in backwards all right so anyway <laughs> that's the only way that would come out that way so but that's okay and then of course our conclusion yes and our conclusion over here is not reject yeah I bet you I put those in backwards that's not a big deal just make sure that you be careful about the directionality on these things so this is greater than Oh, uh, yeah, see, I put them in backwards. Don't do that, <laughs> all right, because it'll jack up um, your your answers that you get for these, okay? So make sure that you're putting that information in there right. And it looks like I made a little mistake on that, but that's that's, uh, that's it's okay. You can usually catch yourself on these things. So there we go for T-test. Just remember the only other type of ones you're going to see is um, where it's a two-tail test. And remember, with a two-tail test, rather than saying it's more or less than like we have here, um, like there are more it'll just say differs or has changed and of course then your null hypothesis is that your sample mean is actually equal to the population mean and then your alternate would be the sample mean does not equal your population mean all right so i hope that helps here with the t-test on this one you should be getting pretty good at either calculating the statistic or using this website right here just make sure you put the signs in correctly <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway hope that helps we'll see you in future videos bye